Uh, let's switch gears now and focus, focus on global inflation. There are more economic troubles for the world, according to the World Bank. The Global Bank noted that the shrinking value of the currencies of most developing economies is driving up food and fuel prices in ways that could deepen the food and energy crisis that many of them already face. According to the World Bank's latest Commodity Market Outlook report, currency depreciations, almost 60% of oil importing emerging market and developing economies saw an increase in domestic currency oil prices recently, while nearly 90% of the economies also saw a larger increase in wheat prices in local currency terms compared to the rise in U.S. dollars. Nigeria is not exempt from this impending headwind, but as the warning light has been flashed, it is important to look at measures that can help stanch this. While well, joining us to discuss this is Mukhtar Mohammed, CEO of Finance with Mukhtar. He joins us virtually. Thank you for joining us, Mukhtar. My pleasure. Thank you. What do you make of this warning coming from the World Bank? Well, World Bank has always been giving this warning to the developing economy. Um, I mean, to develop uh, the developing economy. But I think um, they are not doing enough. I'm trying to the thing they should be doing now should be like trying to help the, the, the smaller economy to get the forgiveness from this big country and then see how they can help them come out of their crisis. It's not just knowing and you keep on blowing the alarm and you're not but, doing anything. Sorry to but issue. isn't that a very simplistic way of tackling the issue, Surf, surface dressing? Uh, if you say they should give some debt forgiveness, we know that for Nigeria, during the Olusegun ambassador tenure, uh, we got some debt forgiveness, but we're back to square one, even worse. So isn't that some simplistic surface dressing way to tackle the issue? No, you, you can't compare this ago about on just debt forgiveness and the type of debt forgiveness that we are we are we are asking for. Remember, President Olusegun type about on just type of debt for the forgiveness that we had from the Paris Club. At that time, it was the interest on that debt we were actually paying, not the real debt. We finished paying the real debt, but mm. it was the interest that we were paying. So it's a different ball game all, all together. I think what African nations need now, especially Nigeria and other African nations, is debt forgiveness or debt. So if we keep getting debt forgiveness, uh, sorry to come in again. Economies yes. begin to feel very threatened. Okay, so if we keep getting debt forgiveness, every time we go cap in hand to ask for debt forgiveness, and then we're back to borrowing, we accumulate the debt again, and then we go back, isn't that a vicious cycle? It's not a situation that we have control over. It's not a situation we plan for. I mean, when COVID came, we know the whole world was being affected by COVID. And after that, we're coming out of it, trying to settle down. And the Russian-Ukraine crisis um, came in. So you cannot say that um, it, it, it's not like before, whereby African countries just borrow in then spend on their loss. We have military leaders. and But we are talking about democracy democratically elected and governance, governance in Africa. So it, I, I don't think it's too much for Africa to ask for a debt restructuring, a debt forgiveness, especially with the times that we are, even even, even the bigger economy are suffering, and talk less of a smaller economy like Nigeria and other African countries. Well, the World Bank stressed that elevated prices of energy commodities that serve as impute to agricultural production have been driving up food prices. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, for Nigeria, we've seen our energy prices remain the same, but we are suffering the other way. We are paying for so much for subsidy. And we see that affecting our currency because it's no ball effect. We are not having so much in our reserve. And so we are not even able to meet the legitimate demands on EPEX. So definitely it has, had, it has affected um, African economy. Ghana's uh, energy price has gone up by almost 400 percent. So it definitely is affecting. In Nigeria, you might not see the effect on the everyday Nigeria, but the effect is telling on the government. That's why government are practically borrowing about 30 percent to pay salary. Hmm. Well, the report also uh, noted that a further spike in the world food prices could prolong the uh, challenges of food insecurity across developing countries like Nigeria. But what does this portend for Nigeria, looking at the recent flood, uh, flood crisis? It portends uh, more danger for us. We already um, suffer in terms of, uh, of, of, of distribution, distribution chain that was, um, was, was also not there because we're um, in terms of infrastructure. Remember, I must not forget that we had a crisis, this farmer hence 
economic crisis that one was there before mm. COVID, and then here we are again battling with the fraud um, um, disaster. So definitely, uh, we we'll see the numbers that will come in, come out from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. We might not see um, that uh, effect in the fraud zone, but going forward, we we'll see those effect, and then also we will not just feel the effect in these numbers. We might begin to feel the effect in the in in the cost of food and services from that part of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Let's also look at another part of the uh, report, especially looking at uh, what Ukraine and Russia war caused. Uh, what are some of the things that you think we should be looking at now, especially in relation to this warning? Well, number one, uh, we, we need to think inwardly. We need to depend less on foreign uh, 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 aid or foreign investment. We need to begin to look at as our, uh, our, our project as collateral to get investment, to, to attract investment into our country, give them tax holiday, they employ our, 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 our youth, and then after 20 to the 5 years, they hand it over to us. So those are um, ways that we can begin to use to build our, our economy going forward. Also, we must begin to look at we should remove that monster comfort subsidy. It had to go because it is shown in a lot of controversy and corruption. So we need to let that go that go to free up money into our effects. Mm. Well, let's also look at the fact that they are saying that there are concerns about a possible global recession next year. Does Nigeria have what it takes to cushion the effect of this coming recession? No, we, we don't have it. Uh, the last time we were able to to guide against this recession, the, the worst recession we've had as a country uh, was um, in 2000, uh, I mean 2008. And at that time, uh, President Obasanjo, we had uh, we had a very robust reserve. We were able to open up that reserve and then we were able to meet our legitimate demand. But at this time now, uh, our reserve is empty. It can only take us six months of consumption. So definitely, it, it, it calls for a lot of concern. Mm. Well, uh, there have also been talks about energy transition. We know that one key issue, one major challenge is uh, the energy transition, which we've not been able to achieve. But with the uh, COP27 coming up next month, and as demand begins to shift from fossil fuels to renewables, what do you think should be Nigeria's top priority? Well, uh, I think our top priority should be one stabilizing our microeconomy, about the greatest challenge I think we are facing as a nation, if we are able to address that challenge, it will have a snowball effect on other areas of our economy, is the exchange rate. Mm. Mm. The exchange rate. If we get the exchange rate under our control and we are able to meet legitimate demands, then I, I, I don't see any rate. what else can we do, because we are already doing everything we have to do. We have brought down rate. We have, I mean, a lot of things that the government is doing. So, definitely, I think they, they need to do more. All right. I think I will just leave the conversation there. Thank you so much for your thoughts on the show this morning. Mukhtar Mohammed, CEO of Finance with Mukhtar. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Still to come after the break, Brent crude rose 1.1% to $95.94 a barrel in early Friday trade, while WTI crude added 1.4% to $87.84 a barrel. Details in a moment. Stay with us.